Hi all. Uh, in this video, we are going to basically explain different networking models that CloudStack offers for the end users as well as the potential use cases. Uh, the reason behind this video is uh, that I've seen a lot of questions uh, from novice uh, users or let's say new users in the CloudStack community, uh, basically asking between different uh, what are the differences between different types of uh, networks that CloudStack provides, basic zone, advanced zone, uh, you name it. So basically, this is aimed for um, the publics or uh, guys and girls who are a bit new to uh, CloudStack and who would like uh, uh, as concise as possible, uh, though it's going to be a bit uh, longer video, uh, explanation on different networking models. So uh, just a few words about myself. Uh, oh, Jesus, wrong picture. All right, this looks fancier now. So I'm a cloud architect at Shapeblue uh, with a bit of experience in virtualization and uh, CloudStack itself uh, behind my back. Um, I'm basically, um, uh, well, I've, I've been involved with CloudStack since version 4.0 incubating when it became a Apache CloudStack project. And I'm now also a project committer and PMC member. Uh, all right, uh, enough of uh, self-commercial, let's move forward. So uh, basically, as I said, we are going to explain differences between this and this, which is a share basic uh, zone in with, uh, well, basically shared network with a public IP space, then uh, advanced zone, uh, shared networks in advanced zone, then isolated networks, then VPC isolated networks or VPCs for that matter, and finally layer two networks. So as you can see, there is a lot of to cover. So let's go. Basically, uh, how it all began uh, in with CloudStack is that initially uh, there was a so-called basic zone implemented, uh, which is basically just one huge uh, shared uh, network. Uh, this is basically similar to the Amazon classical style networking, how Amazon started, basically you have a single flat layer to network and you use security groups to actually isolate uh, different tenants uh, to provide uh, effectively firewall on the hypervisor level to make sure that the, that the different tenants cannot reach each, cannot reach each other unless uh, the security groups specifically allow to do so. So uh, there are a couple of things that uh, you need to keep in mind with uh, basic zones. Um, although it's very simple uh, to set up uh, initially, it does provide least networking features. So you don't have a specific firewall uh, port forwarding, load balancing purposes, nothing. Uh, we are going to show you how this actually looks in a nice diagram a bit later. Um, in general, uh, this scales very well. Uh, there is a known actually installation of uh, literally tens uh, of thousands of hypervisor nodes, a very famous uh, uh, game uh, back in the days that was running on Facebook was actually powered by CloudStack uh, and the basic zone installation, which had 30,000 nodes, uh, which uh, some of you might say uh, this is not true, but unfortunately, or fortunately for that matter, it actually is 30,000 nodes. It does care, scale very well. Um, what's very interesting with basic zone uh, and the security groups, uh, there is uh, what we, uh, well, we can say a common uh, virtual router, a single virtual router per pod, which is only serving DNS and DHCP to those VMs. Uh, it's not routing at all. Uh, the VMs are uh, accessing uh, their uh, default gateway, which is a physical device outside of the cloud stack uh, directly. Uh, so the virtual router is just sending DHCP and potential DNS information uh, to those nodes. Uh, we're going to show this in the diagram uh, just uh, after this slide. So basically uh, also what's uh, worth uh, no uh, mentioning is that uh, the IP addressing of the VMs in that zone can be either from a public IP space, so really publicly routable IP addresses, if you want to provide uh, VPS 
style you all, you all remember the old days of hosting where you buy a VPS so basically it's a VM with a, a public IP on itself so that's something you can achieve here with a basic zone or uh, you, if, if it's some kind of a private cloud or, or some special setup you can also use private um, uh, basically private IP ranges for, for the guest uh, IPs or the IPs uh, for those VMs uh, some other services like, like uh, you know, uh, load balancing or not can be provided with external devices like Netscaler. I'm talking about devices which are external to cloud stack. Now enough of uh, the wording. Let's see how it actually looks uh, uh, when you represent it graphically. So in this uh, specific uh, in this specific example, we have a basic zone uh, which is a shared networking model. And in this diagram, I'm showing you an example with a private IP space. In contrast to that, uh, on the next slide, I'm going to show you how it looks if you use public IP space. So here, uh, this is a pod number one with a certain private IP range. Uh, there are different tenants represented by different colors. Um, and there is a virtual router which is common for all these VMs which only uh, serves as a IP addressing uh, uh, well it's providing DHCP basically to those VMs so they get an IP but the actual gateway of this VM is not the router the actual gateway for all these VMs is some external physical devices in your physical device in your network and this is pod number one here on the right we have pod number two you will notice it's a different subnet a slightly different subnet so these are uh, this is one subnet this is another subnet and again this virtual router here is it dedicated for this pod uh, serves IP addresses uh, and optionally serves as a DNS server for these VMs only the VMs in its own pod and again the default gateway for these VMs is um, uh, the default gateway is some external physical device which is outside of the cloud stack you can see here the notation in, in blue we say cloud stack so everything below this line everything in the blue area is cloud stack everything in the orange area is your physical network devices so obviously if you use a 10 uh, network uh, this gateway ip over here is going to have the same ip private ip but the north uh, interface of north bound interface of this gateway of this router uh, will uh, have uh, potentially a public ip address for example in this range uh, same goes over here for pod number two, ex ex exactly the same story. There is certain routing uh, that you set up between these two routers so that basically, uh, let's say, orange tenant VMs can access their own VMs in another pod over this uh, same, um, basically, private networking. And this is basically it. So the idea is that router is serving only the NS DHCP, but all the traffic to the internet is going through external gateway devices. And as we said, security groups are actually uh, used to uh, uh, provide isolation uh, or security or boundaries, if you like, and traffic isolation between different tenants. So that's, that's the idea. Now, if we move uh, to a, a slightly different uh, example where you actually want to provide, let's rem remember those old days or VPS where you buy a VPS from you know some uh, public provider, that's something you can provide with CloudStack as well. You see that this diagram is pretty much the same as the previous one. This is the previous one and this is the new one. Uh, it's still the same basic network with a shared networking model, obviously, but here with a public IP space, uh, basically all your VMs will have public IP addresses. What does it mean? Uh, well, basically you will assign your uh, guest IP range from the, uh, when you assign a pub, uh, guest IP range to the VMs in this pod, they will be from a publicly routable IP range. So again, the virtual router, identical story, uh, everything is identical, just uh, when you assign this uh, public range for pod number one, the, this router will be issuing DHCP leases or IP addresses for that matter to all the tenants in pod one from this public range, and then you still route further to the internet through some external devices. Still you see this line below, this is cloud stack below, 
all over here is cloud stack and everything above is your physical uh, gateway device and there is certain routing in between and then the uplink uh, effectively let's use the word uplink for that matter it's not maybe a correct term but you know further uh, connection to the internet and this is the way where you can provide uh, the where you can provide basically VPS style um, hosting if you like uh, like in the old days with the help of cloud stack and security groups which are still providing isolation uh, on a layer 3 which is firewall basically on the hypervisor level so this is this is just a difference to show you between uh, again private IP ranges which might be used for your private cloud or some special kind of setup that you want or public IP range where you provide a VPS like style of uh, VMs to your customers and that's basically the basic zone that's that's uh, what it's meant to be used for uh, that's what you can achieve with it uh, the idea is that the router is the virtual router is not routing it only serves this basic DNS and DHCP to the VMs and the VMs are talking directly to the internet through external device Good. Uh, so as uh, every story goes after, you know, some time, uh, long, long days ago after the basic zone was invented and sometime later uh, there was uh, evolution happening uh, in some way and there was advanced zones invented uh, to achieve uh, different purposes. Uh, so basically uh, these provide for much sophisticated network topologies and we have a couple of different type of networks in the advanced zone so just to uh, go back to the basic zone you have only one type of network which is one huge shared network uh, but in advanced zone you can still achieve the same you have the shared networks which can use or not use security groups but beside those shared networks uh, you can have so-called isolated networks uh, layer 2 networks or VPCs virtual private clouds and we are going to explain everything in details with nice diagrams so that you can actually understand uh, what these can be used for what's their use case basically what are the feature set of each of those kind of networks in the advanced zone so uh, Again, yeah, as, as, as I basically said, uh, these provide uh, for much more uh, sophisticated network topologies, which means they provide, provide more flexibility and the networking functions effectively. Uh, but we are going to cover differences between each of those you know, networks that I mentioned uh, that I mentioned over here. We're going to provide basically differences uh, of network services, what is available, for example, in VPC, but not available in isolated networks. But just to keep it, uh, you know, uh, interesting, uh, these are all the different functions you can use basically with a different kind of networks. So from the ACL and firewall to source and static NAT, port forwarding, you know, side-to-side -side VPN, remote VPN, load balancing, um, password rested functionalities and this and that. So all these networking uh, services, we can call them networking services, are by default uh, provided by the virtual router, although there, are, there is possibility to use some external devices orchestrated or managed by CloudStack to also provide some specific functionalities. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's uh, see how that actually uh, looks. Now, uh, a, a big difference, let's say, uh, here uh, when it comes to the tenant network isolation in advanced zone versus the basic zone is that uh, here the network isolation is basically provided by layer 2 means or optionally SDN technologies so with the, with basic zone uh, it's a one huge flat network uh, if you observe layer 2 uh, in that sense it's a huge uh, flat network but we provide uh, with basic zone we provide isolation via security groups which are firewall uh, rules on the hypervisor uh, level uh, which is layer 3 uh, way to uh, provide isolation. In contrast, here with advanced zone, we basically pro pro provide the, this kind of isolation uh, on a layer two by using VLANs, VXLAN, and other optionally some other uh, SDN technologies uh, to. Uh, uh, to basically isolate each uh, tenant network from each other so uh, to achieve uh, you know expected security uh, basically 
Uh, here uh, we have a virtual router per shared network or a virtual router per isolated network or VPC. Uh, this is all going to be shown in a nice way graphically so you can actually understand. And the interesting thing is that the VMs will route all the traffic via virtual router, at least for the isolated VPC networks. It's a slightly different story for shared networks. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, also, uh, guest IP addressing is mostly private or RFC 1918. Uh, if you want to get technical, uh, that's something that's available for shared isolated VPC and layer two networks, or it could be a public uh, IP addresses if you use shared or uh, layer two networks. With layer two, actually, there is no IP address management whatsoever, but yeah, you could achieve basically that with your own uh, equipment. And, well, yeah, it can be complex to understand and set up, so that's the reason why we are going to, why we are having this video to cover all of these uh, and show you graphically uh, with, uh, with an, in, hopefully in a nice and understandable way uh, what you can achieve with each of those uh, different kind of networks within the advanced zone. So let's move forward. Uh, this is just to show you, this is an example of the old UI. We are now using an, a new UI, but this is just to, for the sake of example, uh, to tell you that basically when you provide, uh, we, we have actually in CloudStack, we have support for different, uh, different network providers. So for diff the different devices, there are plugins for different devices, which you can see over here like for the global DNS, SRX, uh, Cisco, and so on and so forth, big switch, to provide certain networking functionalities so that you do not have to use virtual router to provide all of those functionalities. But again, let's, let's move forward and see how this works. So the first, uh, the first type of networks, guest networks, let's say in general, uh, that you can provide for your uh, tenants, for your users in the advanced zone is the shared network, uh, basically. This is very, very similar to a basic zone. So basically you have a huge flat layer two or a single VLAN. And uh, if you enable uh, security groups during the advanced zone creation, so those cannot be toggled uh, on or off later, then all the networks, their offerings for that matter, must use security groups. This is not a very common scenario, but if you want to provide multiple uh, shared networks with security groups, uh, this is a way to go. You can deploy your advanced zone and during the deployment of the advanced zone, you would like to enable security groups. Uh, as I said, this is not a very common scenario. This is only if you want to use a shared networking model in advanced zone. Um, usually you would deploy advanced zone without security groups. When I say usually, that all depends on your business use case. So you know, take this with a grain of salt when I say usually or or unusually. <laughs> so it, it all depends on, on what you want to achieve and what kind of services you want to provide with your cloud stack and in your business. So um, here in the shared network, we can similarly, like in a, in, a, in a basic zone, we can either provide the guest network IPs from the private IP space or public IP space and still achieve identical identical basically uh, kind of service that we achieved with basic zones. Uh, if you don't use security groups, you need to understand that different tenants will share that shared network, which is, that's why the word shared network. So different tenants will share the same network. If you don't use security groups during your advanced zone building, then there is no VM isolation whatsoever. And this is uh, obviously not something you would like to uh, do with a public IP space because uh, your uh, tenant, different tenants will be able to uh, basically speak to other tenants VMs directly if ports are open and there are security implications. Of course, you can use uh, the firewall inside the VMs, but that's now basically not, the, not what we want to uh, achieve here. 
a uh, very uh, thing which is very uh, let's say important to mention is that the shared network uh, within an advanced zone a shared network when you create a shared network it can only be created or provisioned by the cloud administrator not by the users so only by the cloud administrator and basically uh, uh, the administrator is dictating which, which VLAN uh, basically is used, uh, which IP range is used and so on in order to provide specific kind, either a private IP space shared network or public IP space shared network, depending if you use or you don't use security groups in your advanced zone. So that's an important uh, differentiation between the shared network and other networking models that are provided in advanced zone this one can be provisioned only by the cloud administrator let's see how this looks uh, graphically now uh, this is uh, as it says on the slide this is a reminder slide of a basic zone with a shared network which is by definition a shared network model with a private ip space again this is uh, the slide that you, uh, the first slide that I show you initially, this is just a basic zone. Uh, this is just a reminder to see we have a private IP range over here, uh, public, everything is routed through the gateway, and there are security groups by definition in the basic zone. Now, if we actually uh, observe the similar setup in the advanced zone, so again, we provision a shared network, but in advanced zone, and this is with a private IP space, we have something very similar. Uh, we have pod number one over here. I, I on purposely, uh, you know, on the purpose, use the same uh, IP ranges just to show you equivalent how you can achieve uh, the same or very similar with advanced zone versus the basic zone. Here we have different tenants, and this example of advanced zone doesn't use security groups. Uh, I've chosen to show you this kind of a picture otherwise there will be no difference versus the basic zone here you can see that we provision a single vlan the administrator when he creates a shared network will need to specify which vlan here we have vlan 900 and all the tenant vms now vms created by different tenants to which this shared network is available to visible to will be creating their vms in the same vlan now, this is a private uh, example, private uh, IP addressing, uh, which in, uh, implicates possibly a private cloud. So you, we can argue there is no security implications over here because this might be a private cloud. Your, you know, different departments or, or different accounts in your company departments are creating different, ten, represent different tenants. So there is no, there is certain level of trust, obviously, within your colleagues and, and departments of your company. So that's all good. You know, this is still acceptable. Now, um, if you move to the same kind of story in the you know uh, shared network uh, in advanced zone but with a public IP space uh, again on the purpose I use the same IP uh, public IP uh, addresses example for port number one port number two it's basically the same kind of diagram but uh, here, what's important to understand is here we have, for example, VLAN 160, where different tenants will be uh, creating their VMs. But uh, remember, uh, you don't see here I'm, that I'm mentioning security groups because I'm showing you an example of advanced zone without security groups. Now, this does uh, pose uh, a lot of security issues because the orange tenant, let's use that naming, the orange tenant uh, VMs can access the green tenant VMs there is no firewall on the hypervisor side so this is very unsecure and this is something uh, where you can defend security by simply having the firewall inside your vms but again there is nothing uh, that cloud stack will, can do to provide uh you know you, you pro to provide you with security uh, so that's something you want to avoid. That's something you don't want really to do uh, unless this is something experimental. But this is how it will work uh, with uh, the shared zone in a, a shared network. Sorry, in advanced zone. So it's the identical image as with basic zone. Just we don't have security groups in this example. Or optionally, as I already mentioned, you could build your advanced zone with support for security groups, and then you could have uh, security groups here as well and achieve identical, identical, uh, basically, uh, solution or provide the identical solution or achieve the identical setup like you did initially with the basic zones. So that's a difference again uh, between uh, the private IP space 
and the public IP space. Either way, in my example, I'm showing you advanced zone with no security group support. There is no isolation provided by CloudStack. So this uh, slide that you are seeing right now on the screen is not something, or this setup is probably not something you would like to implement because of the security implications. Moving forward, uh, this the all everything we talked so far was uh, basically shared uh, networks. So either in a in a basic zone or shared networks in an advanced zone. But now we are obviously focusing on advanced zone. So let's cover the other types of uh, the other types of networks that you can create within your advanced zone or that your customers can actually create for that matter. Now with advanced zone, basically this is a single network. Uh, on the hypervisor side, this becomes a single VLAN or single VXLAN, whatever layer two isolation method you're using. It's a single network uh, where basically all the VMs are behind a virtual router. Uh, you can achieve most of uh, interesting networking features or provide most of interesting networking features here, but not all. When I say not all, that means VPC can actually uh, provide a bit more, but we'll we'll come to that later. So uh, after the shared network, which basically you have only DNS and DHCP provided, uh, served by CloudStack here with the isolated networks, uh, you have a virtual router, which is protecting your network. This is similar to your home networking, actually, where you have your, you know, your PCs and laptops and everything on a private network connected to a switch, and then your switch is connected to your uh, router that maybe your ISP provided to you. Uh, so your all your devices are are all your VMs basically in here in cloud stack are, are all, all, always on a private IP range but uh, but your router is connected to both this private and what's called public network so it can actually provide you with the access to the outside world uh, here we have uh, uh, basically uh, uh, a lot of net, net, network functioning which are provided by the isolated net networks. I'm going to show you this in a graphical way, but keep in mind that, for example, side-to-side -side VPN uh, and then internal load balancing and so-called private gateway, which we're going to explain what it is later with VPC, these are not available with the simple isolated networks. These features are later available with VPC. Uh, again, this is, as I mentioned, single network behind a virtual router. Uh, and again, later you're going to see the difference evolution of this isolated network where there was a VPC model created with multiple networks behind the virtual router. So with isolated network, it is always a single network behind the virtual router. And that's it. You cannot have more than one network behind the router. Um, isolated networks, uh, like uh, all other kind of networks except the shared ones, can be uh, created and are cre uh, provisioned actually by the end users. And the VLAN on the on the lower level, basically or on the hypervisor side, the VLAN is dynamically selected from the guest that the cloud operator configured for the guest traffic previously on your zone. Um, there are a number of, uh, you know, as I already mentioned, specialized physical devices that can be used to provide some of the network functioning uh, functions, sorry, like the ones that you see over here. But by default, uh, all, all the network functions are actually, uh, all the network services actually are uh, provided by uh, CloudStack. But still, if you're using those dedicated devices, CloudStack can actually uh, fully orchestrate those devices and provision different things by having uh, the API to talk to these uh, specific uh, uh, SDN uh, solution, well, not SDN solution, sorry, but you know, uh, those physical uh, networking devices uh, for that matter. Uh, how this actually looks uh, if we represent it in a graphical way. Right, so here we have three different tenants uh, represented by potentially three different accounts or three different tenants represented by different color, orange, blue, and green over here. Uh, so here what's uh, interesting to understand and to observe actually that each of these tenant network is on a dedicated VLAN. Uh, the tenant doesn't actually see the VLAN that's on the hypervisor level, only the cloud operator can see the VLAN. But uh, just for the sake of example, this one is on VLAN 201, this one other completely different network is on 401. And this one is on 601. As it says, this is different tenants. And this over here 
or everything over here is basically one uh, so-called isolated network uh, well let, let's call it isolated network number one and then this is a completely different isolated network this is a completely different isolated network by another tenant or potentially maybe by the same tenant but again it's a different entity different isolated network so if we focus on a single isolated network we can see that there is a virtual router and there is a single network on vlan which as i mentioned you don't see really as a user but it's a single network on a, a specific apologies on a specific vlan and um, all the vms are connected to the same private network uh, for the sake of uh, explanation, this is 10.100.100.0/24 network, and then what you can do from the from the virtual router. Virtual router uh, is also here on the south uh, interface. If you like, internal interface also has the IP from the, this internal range, whatever internal range you use for your uh, private range you use for your uh, network. But the northbound interface of the cloud stack is uh, connected to a so-called public uh, network uh, here I also used uh, you can see over here uh, actually on the right uh, that the blue area for that matter represents cloud stack guest networks of these are different tenants just to make a separation between what's private what's public and then above this line uh, up is the light orange which represents so-called cloud stack public networking this is to understand that your router has at least uh, here it actually has two interfaces which are important for this story this is the private interface and the public interface again same as your home networking basically uh, or your average let's say home networking now what can what you can do here for example with uh, I use uh, different tenants to show you what kind of services you can use here on the public IP address of this virtual router you can uh, do a port forwarding you can forward uh, forward the port 22 to internal VM so whoever uh, from the outside connects to a public IP of this router this is the public IP of the router on port let's say 22 or some other port you can forward all the traffic to a single VM on a specific port so you can provide as it says port forwarding with the isolated network another function that you can provide i'm showing you here on a different tenant example uh, you can provide what's called a static nut so basically it's the similar with port, like port forwarding but it's actually forwarding all the ports all 65,000 and some more ports to a chosen vm uh, this one over here on the private ip address uh, but also worth mentioning is that uh, this IP address, uh, sorry, this uh, VM is uh, going out uh, through the same IP, represented itself to the internet through the same IP uh, that you uh, that you on, on which you configure basically your uh, static NAT. So port forwarding static NAT. Let's move forward on the example of a third one. You can provide what's called external load balancing in cloud stack. Uh, how this really works uh, here uh, in the virtual router there is a proxy uh, some of you uh, might be aware of what it is the H proxy reverse a proxy that's used to publish basically and do to basically do the load balancing uh, on top of uh, various uh, in various ways actually uh, here uh, we have virtual router which has the public IP address uh, on uh, whatever subnet.103 and here we are for example load balancing the web traffic on port 80 across two VMs these two VMs we can say are for example our two web servers you can see in these different tenant examples I use different private IP ranges right all of those are different across but you could use identical uh, because they're all on their dedicated VLAN so there is no overlapping or anything but just for the sake of you know uh, showing you uh, in a different way they're all different uh, anyway uh, load balancing uh, can be achieved in this way and all the traffic from internet that reaches this public IP address of the virtual router over here the virtual router via HA proxy software will load uh, or balance the traffic uh, across two different VMs their basic health check supports as well so that's something you can provide over here uh, so again port forwarding static NAT external load balancing 
and there is another networking functionality which is the remote vpn here we can we can have uh let's say you you are able to connect from your pc or laptop from your home or from your remote workspace through this is the tenant i took as an example there is basically a strong swan uh, which is the linux implementation of ipsec daemon running over here a vpn uh, i don't want to say concentrator but basically a vpn a gateway device so you can accept remote connection this is ipsec with l2tp which is widely supported on all operating system on windows on linux on mac os so you can connect from your pc and basically be so to speak, sitting inside this network and accessing your VMs. So those are diff four different, uh, four different main, let's say, uh, four main uh, network services that are provided by the simple isolated networks. So uh, later somebody said, okay, this is good. We have uh, one network, only one network behind the virtual router and let's evolve this a bit further and this evolution of the isolated networks came uh, so-called VPCs. Couple of words and then I'll show you uh, this in a graphical way. Uh, with VPCs, uh, you uh, build on top of the existing isolated network uh, and we can certainly say this is the richest network model that exists in cloud stack. Uh, basically, as I said, this is the evolution of the isolated network model. Here you can have multiple networks behind a single virtual router. Again, you will see this in a graphical way, so you will understand what's the difference. Uh, again, it's provisioned by VLAN, uh, by sorry, by the end users, and the VLAN is dynamically selected from the pool of the VLANs that the cloud operator configured during zone creation, and that's for each VPC network because, as we said, there could be multiple networks. Still, each network irrelevant if it's of the same tenant or different tenant every network is on a dedicated VLAN range. Uh, there are special network cases uh, where you can provide a so-called private gateway network. Uh, they are kind of implicitly considered as a VPC internal network, but I'll, I'll show you this in a graphical way. Uh, it's a bit hard to understand when you just speak about it uh, in this way. Uh, what are the different network services support of VPCs? Well, um, pr uh, pretty much everything that was there with isolated networks plus some more. So beside the firewall, which is uh, what's how it's called in simple isolated networks, now we have evolution because there are multiple networks to route between. We now call these ACLs, not specifically firewall anymore with VPC. So with VPC you have ACLs, not firewalls. Uh, even though it's the same basic functionality. Uh, still the same source static NAT, still the same forth forwarding. And when it comes to VPN, beside the remote VPN, we now also provide side-to-side -side VPN. This is a standard industry IPsec tunnel that you can establish between your VPC router and any external device being on Amazon or some Cisco device, a riverbed, doesn't matter really. Uh, load balancing again external as it was but we also have something that's called internal load balancing which is to be honest rarely used and there are some other functionalities beside the regular dns dhcp and so on provided by uh, the vpc uh, same story as with the isolate network uh, a number of specialized physical devices can be used to provide some of the networking functions uh, still they are fully orchestrated by cloud stack so netscaler and sera and so on same story as as before now let's see how this actually looks on a graphical in a, in a graphical way so here I also uh, choose to have three tenants uh, shown in, let's say, the uh, VMs of those tenants shown in uh, orange, in blue, in green color. And again, there is a separation of the networks in general. You can see the blue area, it says cloud stack guest networks, while the orange area is representing so-called cloud stack public network. Uh, and let's see, let's see what are the differences. So, 
uh, basically uh, beside everything else that you already show on the isolated network which I'm not going which I didn't show here this is port porting starting not and public load balancing uh, here we also have well I did show VPN remote VPN but we also have so-called side-to-side VPN where you literally establish IPsec tunnel over internet uh, with your remote DC or your remote office or 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 even your you know route uh, maybe more intelligent router you have at your home so you have site you have a site to site VP, uh, VPN and that's the way you provide uh, uh, access to your internal VMs this is example of this tenant only um, now uh, before I move to uh, the private gateway and explain uh, the private gateway functionality uh, just to keep in mind what I already mentioned uh, in the previous slide every network of the VPC irrelevant if it's the uh, networks of the same VPC or of different VPCs are on their own VLAN again this is not something that the user will see but this is something cloud stack operator will see so this VLAN over here is a one network on VLAN 300, this is a different network on VLAN 301, different network and so on. And this router over here is doing uh, inter, uh, we don't want, I don't want to say inter VLAN routing, but basically it's routing between these three networks. These are three different private networks with different Pub, uh, sorry, with different private IP ranges, different subnets, but all of those are private. And then there is also a public IP, uh, a public network basically over here. So this router is routing between these four, in this example, it's only three, but it could be more, between these three private in between and uh, networks and between those networks and the internet between the public network. So that's just something that I wanted to kind of reiterate once more uh, besides seeing this on the previous slide and then finally let's see uh, again just to depict there is a uh, this blue line which says everything on the left is cloud stack oops and everything on the right is outside of the cloud stack so um, just to explain once more with a side to side VPN you are already aware all the traffic is encrypted with IPsec it goes through the IPsec tunnel but it does go over the public internet so you can say there are certain limitations like uh, internet speed throughput uh, potential security vulnerabilities if they are at some point uh, you know discovered in IPsec maybe or not uh, so beside that uh, you might want to actually not go over the internet and still provide the access to the outside uh, to a remote office that's something you can do with cloud stack with so-called private gateway functionality uh, the private gateway functionality uh, requires that cloud stack operator or data center operating with cloud stack will provide a certain vlan across all your switches in your uh, in your uh, cloud stack infrastructure uh, in your racks basically and then the customer will bring his own device which might be in the different room or in the SAM rack or maybe somewhere else there will be one fiber which might be a few meters or a few hundred meters long uh, and there will be a device which is owned by the actual customer by the end user uh, this VLAN 101 or a small subnet uh, is obviously set up between uh, the virtual router and a physical device that your end user has brought into the same data center, potentially in his own room, uh, maybe somewhere else in the same data center, or it might be further away. The idea is uh, this one over here is a router and this over here also is a router. We call it customer gateway, but it is a router. So basically there is a way for your VMs, uh, and this is for this specific tenant only example, that the green VM tenants can access uh, the same tenant resources on their physical remote uh, remote uh, locations basically uh, basically uh, there will be routing uh, configured on the virtual router with static routes and there will be also routes added to this router over here so uh, just to explain that uh, when you add routes for the private gateway you want to say uh, for these green VMs in order for them to reach the VMs or servers or whatever physical I or well I, whatever IP address is over here they need to send uh, that uh, specific uh, you know packets destined for this specific uh, one uh, 
uh, to this uh, to this device over here. That's the routes actually do on the virtual router for that matter, not the VMs. So the virtual router will know that in order for these green VMs to be able to access resources over here, it needs to send the packets to the IP interface of the customer over here. Uh, same things. Uh, same thing uh, happens over here. Let's use the word in a mirror. Uh, so basically, you need to. Uh, this gateway device needs to know that for the servers or whatever devices over here, in order for them to access the VMs over here, this device needs to send the I, the packet to the interface of the virtual router over here. And that's the way how two routers, when you exchange routes, this way it's statical routes, nothing BGP and so on. So these are statically configured routes. This way you can establish a working traffic between a, a, what's called a dark fiber or a private uh, optical fiber or UTP cable or whatever. But it's a, a private, uh, basically, Ethernet uh, cable of some kind, uh, be it an optical or, or, or copper or whatever, doesn't matter really. That's basically connecting uh, here on a, it's connecting physically to your, uh, to your uh, physical switch and then uh, pa you know, pass for, uh, further SRV land to the virtual router. This is a nice way to have a total uh, security instead of going over the IPsec to access your remote locations. We'll see how this all uh, is done and configured in, in CloudStack with the SA demo, but this is just to understand what kind of uh, solution you can actually achieve. And finally, uh, this will be a short one. We have so-called layer two networks. This is the most recent case. Uh, we can say it's a very special case. Uh, happened after some of uh, probably guys uh, or, or CloudStack users uh, wanted a closed VLAN with basically no services provided by CloudStack whatsoever. Uh, so basically, uh, CloudStack is used of, to orchestrate everything except the networking uh, in some way. Uh, there is no IP address management, so no DHCP, there is no virtual router, nothing. Uh, how this looks, uh, it definitely looks weird, you might say, well, uh, let's see, actually. Uh, the idea is that you bring your own device that will provide uh, either IP address uh, management uh, functionalities or routing or, or DNS or whatever you want to do. Uh, how it actually uh, how it actually looks, uh, besides being able, obviously, to uh, configure private or public IP spaces. Let's see this on a diagram. So here, uh, when you uh, create so-called layer two network, we just provision a VLAN, uh, which end up being uh, as a VLAN interface in KVM uh, or, or bridge with VLAN interface or a specific port group in VMware or a specific network on a specific VLAN in Zen server. But either way, we provision a VLAN, uh, in this example, 850, and you can create VMs and everything is orchestrated, you know, VMs, uh, storage of those VMs. Everything is orchestrated by CloudStack, except there is no virtual router whatsoever. So you can see here again, we have, we have a separation in the blue is the CloudStack area. Uh, the gray area over here is some uh, physical external uh, devices that your uh, customer might provide it if it's a private cloud, for example, provided. And uh, over here in this outside of CloudStack world or, or outside of the CloudStack area, you might have uh, brought your own, for example, uh, PFSense or some other devices uh, which will do uh, serve as a DHCP for these VMs, DNS, a default gateway, uh, IPsec gateway, or whatever. So that's a special case, basically. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to uh, the layer two networks.